Time for the Business News Now with Charles Pellegrin. Uh, Charles, you're taking a, a look at a landmark deal signed by Google with a U.S. nuclear power startup. Mm -hmm. The tech giant has entered into an agreement with Kairos Power, a U.S. startup that builds small nuclear reactors. Uh, the deal is meant to help meet Google's increasing energy demand as it builds more data centers to power its artificial intelligence products. It could also fuel a revival of nuclear power in the U.S., where it represents about 20% of power, but has been bogged down by long light timelines and high costs. Um, the deal basically commits Google uh, to buying energy produced by Kairos as small nuclear reactors and to backing the construction of seven reactors that should be delivered between 2030 and 2035. For the first of those will be a 50 megawatt reactor, while the six others will come in pairs of 75 megawatt reactors. So adding 500 megawatts by the end of the decade at the earliest. Uh, as a point of comparison, the conventional nuclear powers have uh, 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 one th nuclear plants have 1,000 megawatt reactors. That power generation would be enough to power a mid-sized city or a uh, one AI data center uh, campus. No dollar figure has been released, but this is the first deal of its kind in the U.S. for nuclear energy. Uh, purchasing uh, power commitments from future buyers exists, but for solar and wind energy products. So nuclear energy in the U.S. really seems to be hitched to big tech. Mm -hmm. uh, power demand in the country really is rising, and in a big part, it's driven by the need to build more data centers to support the artificial intelligence revol revolution, as well as a transition to electric vehicles. Uh, U.S. electricity demand has stayed stable since 2010, but it's changing, as you can see there, by 2030. 290 terawatts could be added by data centers and electric, electric vehicles uh, alone. Um, and in the past few months, we've actually seen other tech giants uh, turn to nuclear energy to meet uh, those demand needs. Last month, Microsoft teamed up with Constellation Energy uh, to restart the undamaged nuclear reactor at Three Mile Island, a facility which went through a, a partial nuclear meltdown in 1979, as you can see in those pictures earlier. Uh, this year also, Amazon uh, purchased a data center at another Pennsylvania nuclear plant. There's still a long way to go though. Nuclear facilities take a long time to clear regulatory hurdles and don't tend to come online very frequently. This means that in the meantime, gas-powered plants will be put to use to meet demand uh, for AI servers, which won't help reduce emission car uh, carbon emissions. All right, take us, uh, take us through what's moving on the markets now, Charles. Well, Asian markets uh, flat or mixed this hour. Hong Kong and mainland stocks uh, shedding value after disappointing trade data for September. Uh, as you can see, the Hang Seng down over 4%. Uh, the Nikkei in Tokyo, though, hitting a three-month high. Uh, this follows gains on Wall Street at the close on Monday with both the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 reaching new highs. Uh, AI chipmaker NVIDIA lifting its market value to over $3.4 trillion as demand for its products uh, keep rising. And this, in turn, has lifted uh, sentiment in, in Asian semiconductor, semiconductor stocks, especially for NVIDIA suppliers like South Korea's SK Hynix and Samsung Electronics or Taiwan's TSMC and Foxconn, as you can see there. Let's also have a look at what's happening in on the major European bourses at the open. Um, it's a mixed picture uh, with the DAX in Frankfurt uh, tracking those gains that we saw on Wall Street up over a third of a percent higher. But there is uncertainty then for NVIDIA. There is uncertainty on the horizon. Semiconductors are a bit of a strategic asset and have strong bearing on national security. Bloomberg is reporting that the Biden administration is discussing uh, capping sales and exports of advanced chips from NVIDIA and other U.S. companies like AMD to specific countries in order to in order to curb their ability to develop artificial intelligence. Um, officials are reportedly focused on Persian Gulf countries like the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia. And moving on, protesters have again hit the streets in Barcelona against ever-increasing mass tourism. Mm -hmm. Locals saying that it's making their lives uh, miserable. The latest demonstration coincided with the start of the final races at the America's Cup sailing event, which one protester described as yet another elitist event where that public money goes into hosting while the rest of a society suffers from high cost of living and a housing crisis. Yukaroi has this. This banner reads, Barcelona is not an amusement park. Protesters are back on the streets saying they've had enough. For them, the success of the city as a tourist magnet has made it unaffordable for locals. 
It's very sad that this tourism model means that there are no suitable rooms for people who live in the city. It's become impossible to live here, and having to spend an hour and a half to come to work in Barcelona is outrageous. Growth in short holiday rentals has exacerbated a years-long housing crisis, with rent soaring 68 per cent over the past decade. Traditional businesses that cater for locals' needs have slowly been pushed aside. They provided a service, a good service, and we have become orphans of this type of trade. The trade has disappeared and now, depending on what you're looking for, you can't find it anywhere because it's all restaurants and souvenir shops. The number of foreign visitors continued to rise in Spain, with more than 10.9 million arrivals in August alone, up 7.3 per cent from a year earlier. City officials say tourism accounts for 13.5 per cent of Barcelona's GDP, creating wealth and jobs. Amid residents' anger, they promised to diversify the economy. Above 13.5 per cent of GDP, Tourism probably no longer adds value, so we have to look for different tourism management strategies, but at the same time try to grow and develop other economic activities. Barcelona's socialist mayor has announced measures to crack down on tourist rentals, but has also backed a planned expansion of the international airport. Critics say more needs to be done to curb over-tourism. Thank you very much for that, Charles.